Welcome to another video. We've used a lot of music players over the years, and today we're going to talk about our latest music player. It's called Volumio. What makes it so special? Well, first, it's just software. You can install it on a wide variety of hardware, including the Raspberry Pi Model 3B, which I've used here. It's designed to be what's called a headless music player. Everybody in your house can use their phone or their web browser on their PC to control it. And when you update one screen, all the other ones stay in sync. Like I'll change the song here and you notice the phone gets updated too. So it just is sort of like a little music server that's there in the background waiting for you to tell it what to play. And the designers of this system have made it like a turnkey approach. So when you install on the Raspberry Pi, you don't install it on top of anything. You just install it and the Raspberry Pi becomes a dedicated music player. Here you see some of the screens in the user interface. The key thing to know is that in order to enable certain features, you use what are called plugins. And so, for example, there's a plugin to activate Pandora. The Spotify plugin requires a premium account, but you can get around that by just using AirPlay from your, your phone. In general, I found the UI easiest to work with using Chrome on a PC. So why do you even need this? Well, for me, it's been a great way to get my digital music files over to my sound system that my PC is not directly connected to. When I'm at work, for example, it's a lot less effort to just go to a browser tab and send a song over, you know, than deal with a music player right there sometimes. And my wife was also able to use her iPhone to send uh, Spotify music directly to this. So it has AirPlay support built in. In addition, I didn't know this, but Windows 10 has a casting ability built in and you can just send a song to it. So it's, it's really just got a lot of versatility when sending music to it. As you see on this screenshot, it does build its own little searchable database, but you don't have to use this. I was able to integrate it into my existing sort of digital music strategy and use my own uh, FUBAR 2000 playlists that I've already created with it. Now, if you're a Raspberry Pi user, setting this up is really easy. You just download the image, you flash it to an SD card, and you install it. And if you're using Ethernet, that's it. If you need to use Wi-Fi, it will create a temporary network and you can connect to that and configure your own Wi-Fi network. But this only worked for me on the Model 3. Just as a test, I also tried to install it on this 2012-ish Raspberry Pi. I don't know what exact model it is. This is an old JBL iPod dock. But anyway, it actually worked, but the automated Wi-Fi setup did not work with this external adapter. But And the UI was really laggy, but it sounded great. And that's basically it for the major part of the video. Just a couple of closing notes on some things that might be useful if you want to try this. One is a DAC or digital to analog converter. You really need this if you're going to listen to this with any sort of seriousness. I thought when you read about Volumio, it's like, oh, you need an audiophile DAC, but really you just need one to make it sound decent on the Raspberry Pi. This is a Hi-Fi one, Hi-Fi Me DIY. It was about $30. It's got optical and analog out. It sounds perfect on my Sansui 77. Sounds really good. Got those uh, RCA connectors. The other thing I noticed is that there's a, it's free software, but there is a paid version. The paid version unlocks more features, the most notable of which is Bluetooth. Uh, but this was not a showstopper for me. If you remember an earlier video we released, I have this, these little Bluetooth adapters, should I want to use them, but with all the casting possibilities, I really haven't missed Bluetooth in this particular setup. In conclusion, I think I really like this. Um, there were some occasional playback problems, mostly on the UPnP side, not on the NAS side, with files that wouldn't play or got cut off prematurely, but in general, for free software, it's excellent. I like being able to let my family play high-quality music over my vintage system. They would never probably thread up some tape or cue up a record, but they will cast to this thing no problem. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you, as always, for liking and subscribing. See you next time for another awesome video.